Hello, my name is William Ware and I'm an independent telecoms analyst. I'd like to talk today a little about what policymakers should look at, should enable and should avoid in the telecommunications environment. Of course, there's no doubt that telecoms is critical to businesses and the consumers. We all know that. And indeed, policymakers such as governments, regulators, competition authorities and others are well aware of this <clears throat> and have been working for many years to try and improve the telecoms environment. But there's been a significant change. As I set out in a new book that I published just recently called The End of Telecoms History, we've now moved to a world where finally we have sufficient connectivity. If you have broadband to your home, let's say fibre directly to, to your home or office, or indeed to a local cabinet, and you have good mobile connectivity, 4G in fact is sufficient, then you have enough speed. In fact, going any faster than those kind of technologies is pointless because for almost every application, you'll be limited not by the speed of the access network, but by the speed of the internet and the far end servers and so on. <clears throat> and in fact, speeds of about 50 megabits to the home and about 10 megabits to the mobile are all that we need. Going any faster provides no discernible benefit. Not only do we have enough speed, we have enough data capacity. Go back 10 years and data growth was in the region of 50% every year, but it slowed substantially. It's now below 20% on mobile networks and below 10% a year on fixed networks, and it's slowing continuously. So I estimate that within three or four years, we'll reach a plateau where we won't be seeing any material data growth anymore. So we have networks now that are fast enough and that have enough capacity. It's great news. We have the connectivity that we need. And hence the historical role of policymakers of improving that connectivity is no longer necessary. We don't need more. We don't need faster, better networks. But what's left is to fill in the holes, to deliver ubiquity, to make sure that wherever we are, we are able to connect reliably with the kind of data rates I talked about so that we can always have the benefits of great communications. And ideally, all of this at low cost. This doesn't mean 5G and fiber everywhere. We don't need the speeds that those technologies provide and they're expensive. Instead, it means subsidizing deployments of much more cost-effective technologies that deliver sufficiency. And that includes satellites, it includes emerging high altitude platforms, and things like shared networks have a substantial role to play. So to sum up, what should policymakers avoid? Well, they should avoid fighting the last battle. They should avoid obsessing about things like gigabit connectivity, about being first to 6G, or even about the extent of 5G. We already have enough, we don't need to push for more. They should stop worrying about things like telecoms league tables. The country with download speeds well above 100 megabits a second is irrelevant. Their speeds well above what people need. What should they enable? Well, they need to enable mechanisms to deliver ubiquity, and that means funding it in some way, shape or form, directly or indirectly. And it means promoting the kind of technologies that are needed to deliver the, the best solutions for a ubiquitous connected world in a way that still maintains a competitive environment. And it's not difficult. We have all the tools we need to do these kind of things, but it is a very major shift in mindset amongst regulators and others. And I think it will be quite difficult for some of them to get their heads around what's now needed in the world of sufficient connectivity. Thank you very much for listening to me.